What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, last video I showed you we got the home development rear roll center correction brackets. So today we are going to be replacing the 20 year old trailing arms on this car because I'm pretty sure the trailing arm bushings are beat. The other trailing arms that I installed roll centers on have ASR uh, revolvers which are I guess they're spherical, but they have like a a Dalron bushing in it, like plastic. I'll show it to you when, once I get to it. But anyway, all this is going to need to come off. So, I already have the car jacked up and everything. So, I'm going to start up on the rear toe bolts because if any of the bolts are going to give me trouble, I feel like it's going to be those or the bolts that hold on this upper camber arm right here. So, first thing I'm going to do is I got this paint marker. I'm going to crawl up under the car and I'm going to mark around the trail and arm bolt so that way when I put everything back together I roughly can get it in the same spot until I'm able to get this car in alignment. Alright so I marked out the toe bolts but while that paint's drying because it takes a couple minutes to dry I'm going to start pulling off this caliber right here. Uh, first step is let down the e-brake. I'm going to take off this bracket here and then I'm going to go around to the back and loosen up the bolt that's holding the brake line to the trailing arm and then pull out these two 12s on this and that should come off. I'm just going to leave the bracket on there and we're probably going to have to disconnect the e-brake cable lines. Let me explain what I'm doing so I don't get too far ahead and this video isn't that instructional. So on the back, there's two 12 millimeter bolts that's holding this brake line. There's also a 12 millimeter bolt on the back side of the trailing arm that holds the e-brake cable. I took off the two 12s that hold the caliber. The up here, I took off the e-brake spring right here. I just used a pair of needle nose pliers, flexed it back, and then there was a bolt holding it on. So I took that the bolt off and now I have this so now the e-brake cable is loose but the e-brake cable has to come off the bracket because it won't fit through this hole right here so basically right now I'm gonna try to pop this off I'm probably gonna put a small socket around this nut right here and then put it in a, a c-clamp and tighten it up and hopefully it should pop up so I wanted to show you exactly how I did this so I took a big c-clamp put 11 millimeter short socket on here put the c-clamp on the other side tighten it up pop right through otherwise it wasn't going to come through i banged it with a copper or brass hammer and it still wouldn't move this way popped out right away so the last clip i showed you how to get the pin out of the e-brake cable so right here on the caliber there's two 12 millimeter bolts that hold on this bracket right here that the cable slides through you have to get this off there's a clamp sort of like this one right here that holds this brake line on that's holding it so once you slide this out you slide the uh, e-brake cable through this hole and now that's loose so now we're going to slide underneath the car and try to get that rear toe bolt this is the e-brake cable just hanging freely so you can see i marked around this rear toe bolt with the marker so i can try to line it back up to where it was uh, I believe this is a 14, so we're going to try to loosen this up. We're going to do it a little bit at a time because we don't want this to snap. And hopefully it's not seized in the OE arm. So got the bolt out. It came out relatively easy. I used a half inch breaker bar just to break it loose. And then I switched to a 3 8 just to loosen it up the rest of the way. Once I got like about two or three cranks, it threaded out by hand. So I'm super excited about that because... I just talked to my friend and he pulled off the trail and arms on his car and this was actually seized in the tow arm and the head of it snapped off. So I'm glad I didn't have those problems. I also took out this bolt from the lower control arm to the trail and arm. Uh, if you recall from two videos ago, I just put these bolts in there so they were brand new. And of course it's got anti-seize on it so it's all over me. So now, 
hopefully are going to work on getting off these two 14s here. These are the only other two that I'm worried about. So once these are off, then we'll work on the trailing arm bolts. I'll probably put the jack under this right here to hold it so it doesn't fall down. So let me work on getting these two off. All right, so the arm's off. Everything came apart super easy. Um, the toe arm and the uh, upper arm that I want to replace with the camper arm, those were on pretty well. I had to use a little bit of heat on the bolt to break it loose, but I have those off. The reason I needed to take these off is because I'm going to try to measure out the camber kit to get this adjustment and a uh, adjustable toe to get this adjustment. So let me grab the other arm and we'll start getting that stuff lined up. I want to show you the condition of this trailing arm bushing. I'm glad this didn't fail when I was on track. But these trailing arms aren't going to be used anymore. These are definitely going to be spares. Um, sometime in the future when I get wider wheels, I'm probably going to have to notch this and box this out. But that's way later down the road. But at least I have a spare set. So I'm going to grab the other arms and then we'll get these two parts adjusted. So this is the toe arm. I just put a bolt through both sides and they line up pretty much exact. Now the camber kit, on the other hand, I have it lined up on the back as you can see this mounting surface is a little bit thicker than this one and I have them lined up I don't have a bolt long enough to go all the way through but it looks pretty much straight I mean close as I'm gonna get by eyeing it up so I'm gonna tighten these up this is the trailing arm uh, the home development roll center correction the ASR revolver I have to put the arm in here but I'll probably slide this in once it's underneath the car. That way I can line the holes up. So getting this back on is a little bit of pain to do it by yourself. But I got the lower control arm bolt in. So I also tapped in the ASR um, trailing arm mount thing. So now since the trailing arm's twisted, I'm going to try to get this camber kit bolted in up here. I'm going to put some anti-seize on the bolts so I don't have a problem in the future. So I'm going to do that now and then we'll work on getting the toe arm hooked up next. Last clip I told you I was going to mount this up. I had to go buy 5 millimeter longer bolts because of the thickness of that plate. I showed you when I was trying to align the two to the same. Uh, so those are in tightened up. This is tightened. I tightened up the geometry bracket, this gold bolt. Uh, I slid the, oh, let me get a better angle. I got the bar through the ASR revolver. That's tightened up. And the toe is all anti-seized and tightened up. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right back exactly where it was. So hopefully the uh, alignment's not going to be crazy off, but either way it's still going to have to get aligned before track season. So right now I'm going to come back here, bolt this brake cable back up, come around up in here, and then get the brake line bracket bolted back up. Those are just 12s, and then we'll move to the front and start assembling the hybrid brakes for the back. So this is the upgraded rear rotor. I believe this is 10.2. This comes from a O2, O4, EP3. Uh, it's four lug. This is a RSX uh, bracket right here. And then the factory caliber will bolt onto it. I was under the impression that you could only use the RSX calibers. But if you use those, you have to use the driver one on the passenger side and the passenger one on the driver's side. Then the bleeders will be facing down, so it's a huge pain. But thanks to Eric Cotille, 
he posted up a video on his Instagram the other day saying you could use the Integra ones. So that's what I plan on doing. I am going to be using these rusty Integra calibers, but I just went to the auto parts store and ordered new calibers. They will be here I don't know, tomorrow or something, but I probably won't put them on to sometime next week. So right now I'm going to slide the pads in there. I'm just using stock RSX brake pads and then we'll start to get the e-brake cable back together and then this side's pretty much finished up. Alright, so this side's all together. Don't quote me on the pads because I thought I could use RSX pads which are these. But they seem to be a little bit too thick. Like just a hair. So I'll update you on the next video or whatever when I get the calibers to replace these ones and let you know exactly which ones I use. I just threw the Integra pads in here for the time being. They're a little loose but I don't think they'll fall out and plus I'm only pulling the car into a parking spot. So I'm going to start tearing the other side apart. Probably not going to film much because it's going to be the same exact um, thing as this side. So once I get done all that I'll close out the video. So things go so much faster when you're not filming. Just pull this whole trailing arm with hand tools only in 14 minutes. So I'm going to line up the camber arm and the tow arm again and repeat the process that I already showed you guys. Alright, so I did get... So I did end up getting... Shut the fuck up! So I did end up getting both sides done yesterday. This is what it looks like when the suspension's settled. Uh, I guess the geometry correction changes the ride height or whatever. But it's tucking tire in the back now. Which definitely needs to be addressed. It does look cool, but the fenders aren't rolled so it rubs the tire a bit. So, I still haven't figured out the brake situation. I kind of know what I have to do now. I just need to get uh, EP3, Integra Type R, RSX, or TSX rear brake pads. All the same part number, I already checked into it. But apparently, the outside brake pad, you have to shave down two millimeters for the caliber to clear it. I was unaware of that. I thought it was a straight bolt going process, but doing a little bit of research, I figured it out. So. I have two new calibers coming, like I said earlier, so once I change those out, I'll, I'll worry about shaving it down. I'll probably have to buy a belt sander or something because I'm not sure how else I would shave down a brake pad, but I will give you guys an update on that and let you know how that works out. Right now, I just threw the stock Integra brake pads on here. I'm only driving the car around the block and parking it. So if you have any question about how to change these trailing arms, feel free to drop it. Everything was self-explanatory. But if you do decide that you want to do this, I do recommend a few days before spraying everything down with uh, some PB Blaster or some kind of penetrant. Uh, that way everything loosens up because I don't think these trailing arms have ever been off of this car. Luckily, I didn't have any broken bolts. But until next time, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.